very good morning and welcome to our parish Eucharist on this, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And we're going to begin our service with the opening hymn, Come Thou Long Expected Jesus. The Lord be with you. And also with you. We're now going to light our fourth Advent candle. And as we do it, we pray. Lord Jesus, light of the world, blessed is Gabriel who brought good news. Blessed is Mary, your mother and ours. Bless your church preparing for Christmas and bless us, your children, who long for your coming. Amen. Almighty God, who forgives all who truly repent, have mercy upon you, pardon and deliver you from all your sins, confirm and strengthen you in all goodness, and keep you in life eternal, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our prayer for this Sunday. Eternal God, as Mary waited for the birth of your Son, so we wait for his coming in glory. Bring us through the birth pangs of this present age to see with her our great salvation in Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. And our next hymn this morning is A Great and Mighty Wonder.
Hear the Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to Luke. Praise to thee, O Christ. In the sixth month, the angel Gabriel was sent by God to a town in Galilee near Nazareth, to a virgin engaged to a man whose name was Joseph, of the house of David. The virgin's name was Mary. And he came to her and said, Greetings, favoured one, the Lord is with you. But she was much perplexed by his words and pondered what sort of greeting this might be. The angel said to her, Do not be afraid, Mary, for you have found favour with God. And now you will conceive in your womb and bear a son, and you will name him Jesus. He will be great and will be called the Son of the Most High. And the Lord God will give him the throne of his ancestor David. He will reign over the house of Jacob forever, and of his kingdom there will be no end. Mary said to the angel, How can this be, since I am a virgin? The angel said to her, The Holy Spirit will come upon you, and the power of the Most High will overshadow you. Therefore the child to be born will be holy, he will be called Son of God. And now your relative Elizabeth, in her old age, has also conceived a son. And this is the sixth month for her who was said to be barren. For nothing will be impossible with God. Then Mary said, Here am I, the servant of the Lord. Let it be with me according to your word. Then the angel departed from her. This is the Gospel of the Lord. Glory to thee, O Lord. Let us pray. May the words of my lips and the meditations of all our hearts be now and always acceptable in your sight. O God, our strength and our Redeemer. Amen. Well, we're nearly there. It's nearly Christmas, the fourth Sunday of Advent. And it's been a year, hasn't it? Looking back over this year, unless you're over 80 years old and experienced life at war, 2020 must rate as one of your most challenging years. What challenges have you faced in your life which are worse? For those who've had some really sad moments in your life, in childhood, in marriage, in your singleness, then there may be other years which rate amongst your worst as you look back. For me, there are particular years that were more painful than this, one in 1990 and one in 2015. But 2020 has truly been a tough one for most of us, as individuals and as families and as communities. I want to think back to another year that was tough. Tough for a child, a young teenager, no older than 13, living in a backwater in a rural region in the Middle East, was a young Jewish girl who was probably about to undergo an arranged marriage. She lived a sheltered life, probably went with the women of the village on the Sabbath day to the small synagogue in the town, whilst the men went to pray inside. She probably had a simple faith passed on to her by her family through story time. She would have heard of the daring do of Daniel and David and Joseph and Moses and Abraham and heard of the adventures of the kings and the insights of the prophets and the judges. She would have the Psalms in her head as they sang them every year on the way to the Passover feast in the big city of Jerusalem. And she knew that her people were awaiting someone called the Messiah. And one day this girl had an encounter with a messenger from God called Gabriel. Gabriel, the angel of whom she might have heard, who had interpreted one of Daniel's visions and similarly terrified Daniel when he came. Who wouldn't be terrified when you hear the words of God spoken to you by a heavenly creature? 
The words he spoke to her, he would, she would never forget. But he told her that she was greatly favoured, favoured by God, and chosen to have a son, a son who would be the saviour, to be named he saves, for that is what Jesus means, he saves. And this saviour would bring in a new kingdom and he would rule over Israel and his reign would be eternal. In other words, Mary was about to give birth to the Messiah, the Messiah she was waiting for, the long-awaited king whose advent would usher in a new reign. What was her reaction to all of this? Well, the first was fear. The second, though, was to question both what all this meant and how it happened. She questioned quite persistently. And Gabriel, give him his due, explained it all very carefully and patiently to her. He even gave her surprise news that meant she would not be on her own in bearing this burden. Her much older relative, Elizabeth, was also pregnant, which gave Mary someone she could talk to about this and also someone she could run off to so that she didn't have to bear the ignominy of an unexpected pregnancy in full view of the possibly nosy people in her small town. So her third reaction after the fear and the questioning was acceptance. Fear, questioning, acceptance. We have in Mary someone who has faced what we have faced this year. Fear, questioning, and finally acceptance, if indeed we have come to accept and see any positives about the year. And Mary came not only to acceptance, but also to spirit-filled joy when Elizabeth met her, and both were filled with the Holy Spirit as they both sang out praises to God. So turning to ourselves now, on this Sunday when we remember Jesus, Mary, does it move us or bore us, this familiar story of the Annunciation? Or does it fill us with fear? Are we perhaps a bit scared and suspicious of the supernatural? How would we fare if we met a heavenly creature? Or is it too challenging to think what the advent of Jesus means? God coming to earth as a human being and instituting a new set of challenges for us, but based on the rule of love. Love God and love yourself, and love your neighbour. Do we instead prefer to go on as normal? Well, this year is far from normal. And maybe God is challenging us to put Christ back at the heart of Christmas this year. Maybe instead of bemoaning the fact that we can't spend time feasting and partying with relatives, we can spend time thinking about what it means to us that Jesus, God, was born as a human being. If we're alone on our own on Christmas Day, rather than being lonely, we could call this time solitude and reflect on the fact that the baby came in human likeness to give us a pattern for living and loving. It may be time well spent to think what it means to live like Jesus, who, as in Philippians, being in very nature God, did not consider equality with God something to be grasped, but made himself nothing, taking the very nature of a servant being made in human likeness. So whatever your thoughts about the year, Let's not feel too sorry for ourselves this Christmas, but embrace the challenge 
as Mary did. Let's get beyond our fear and our questions and our self-pity and move towards praising God as Mary did. My soul magnifies the Lord, for the Mighty One has done great things for me, despite the challenging year. Amen. And so for our creed. We believe in one God, the Father, the Almighty, maker of heaven and earth, of all that is seen and unseen. We believe in one Lord Jesus Christ, the only Son of God, eternally begotten of the Father, God from God, light from light, true God from true God, begotten not made, of one being with the Father. Through him all things were made, for us and for our salvation. He came down from heaven, was incarnate from the Holy Spirit and the Virgin Mary, and was made man. For our sake he was crucified under Pontius Pilate. He suffered death and was buried. On the third day he rose again in accordance with the scriptures. He ascended into heaven and is seated at the right hand of the Father. He will come again in glory to judge the living and the dead and his kingdom will have no end. We believe in the Holy Spirit, the Lord, the giver of life who proceeds from the Father and the Son, who with the Father and the Son is worshipped and glorified, who has spoken through the prophets. We believe in one holy Catholic and apostolic church. We acknowledge one baptism for the forgiveness of sins. We look for the resurrection of the dead and the life of the world to come. Amen. Our prayers of intercession this morning are led by Eleanor. Let us pray. Gathered together as the Church of God in this place, let us pray together for the coming of God's promised kingdom. Lord of heaven, may the church be quiet enough to hear your voice, humble enough to move in your way, and excited enough to spread your good news. We thank you for the ministry of Helen and for all those who will support her in the years ahead. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, bless all in positions of authority across our nations, that they may have integrity, humility, and a sense of what is right for all, and that tensions and conflicts may be peacefully resolved. At this time of climate crisis, help us all to cherish your creation more. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, make our homes places of love and faith. Teach us in all our friendships to grow always in generosity of spirit. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, we pray for the hungry, the afflicted, the outcast, the wrongdoer, the hopeless, and all those whose future seems at this time uncertain in any way. For those who feel lonely, or who are facing big future decisions, or who are wounded physically or emotionally. Help us to meet these needs in our fellow beings, by feeding, comforting, loving, forgiving, and inspiring in any way we can. Kindle the sacred light of hope for all and bring healing for all those who have asked for our prayers. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, welcome into your eternity all those who have died to this life and whose hope is in you. Comfort those who mourn them and reach into their pain with your love. Lord, in your mercy, hear our prayer. Lord of heaven, 
We thank you for your faithful promise to us, fulfilled in the coming of Jesus, as we wait to welcome him into our lives this Christmas. Merciful Father, accept these prayers for the sake of your Son, our Saviour, Jesus Christ, our Lord. Amen. And so for the peace. In the tender mercy of our God, the day spring from on high shall break upon us to give light to those who dwell in darkness and in the shadow of death and to guide our feet into the way of peace. The peace of the Lord be always with you. And also with you. And so in our hearts and in our minds we offer one another a sign of the peace. The Lord is here. His Spirit is with us. Lift up your hearts. We lift them to the Lord. Let us give thanks to the Lord our God. It is right to give thanks and praise. You are worthy of our thanks and praise, Lord God of truth. For by thy breath of your mouth you have spoken your word, and all things have come into being. You fashioned us in your image and placed us in the garden of your delight. Though we chose a path of rebellion, you would not abandon your own. Again and again you drew us into your covenant of grace. You gave your people the law and taught us by your prophets to look for your reign of justice, mercy and peace. As we watch for the signs of your kingdom on earth, we echo the song of the angels in heaven, evermore praising you and saying, Holy, holy, holy Lord, God of power and might, heaven and earth are full of your glory. Hosanna in the highest. Blessed is he who comes in the name of the Lord. Hosanna in the highest. 
Lord God, you are the most holy one, enthroned in splendor and light. Yet in the coming of your Son, Jesus Christ, you revealed the power of your love, made perfect in our own human weakness. Amen. Lord, Lord we believe. believe. Embracing our humanity, Jesus showed us the way of salvation. Loving us to the end, he gave himself to death for us, dying for his own. He set us free from the bonds of sin, that we might rise and reign with him in glory. Amen. Lord, Lord we believe. On the night he gave up himself for us, he took bread and gave you thanks. He broke it and gave it to his disciples, saying, Take, eat, this is my body which is given for you. Do this in remembrance of me. Amen. Lord, we believe. In the same way, after supper, he took the cup and gave thanks. He gave it to them, saying, Drink this, all of you. This is my blood of the new covenant, which is shed for you and for many for the forgiveness of sins. Do this as often as you drink it in remembrance of me. Lord, we believe. Therefore, we proclaim the death that he suffered on the cross. We celebrate his resurrection, his bursting from the tomb. We rejoice that he reigns at your right hand on high, and we long for his coming in glory. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Lord Jesus. As we recall the one perfect sacrifice of our redemption, Father, by your Holy Spirit, let these gifts of your creation be to us the body and blood of our Lord Jesus Christ. From us, form us into the likeness of Christ and make us a perfect offering in your sight. Amen. Come, Amen. Holy Spirit. Look with favour on your people and hear in your mercy the cry of our hearts. Bless the earth, heal the sick, let the oppressed go free and fill your church with power from on high. Amen. Amen. Come, Come, Holy, Holy Spirit. Spirit. Gather your people from the ends of the earth to feast with St. Peter and all your saints at the table in your kingdom, where the new creation is brought to perfection in Jesus Christ our Lord, by whom and with whom and in whom. In the unity of the Holy Spirit, all honour and glory be yours, Almighty Father, for ever and ever. Amen. Amen. As we look for the coming of the Kingdom, Lord, teach us to pray. Our oh, Father, Father, who art in heaven, hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom, kingdom come, thy will be done on earth as, as it is in heaven. heaven. Give us this day our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, for ever and ever. Amen. We break this bread to share in the body of Christ. Though we are many, we are one body, because we all share in one bread. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, have mercy on us. Lamb of God, you take away the sins of the world, grant us peace.
with the promised Saviour, fill us, your servants, with your grace, that in all things we may embrace your holy will, and with her rejoice in your salvation, through Jesus Christ our Lord. Amen. Amen. And we say together, Father of all, we give you thanks and praise that when we were still far off, you met us in your Son and brought us home. Dying and living, he declared your love, gave us grace and opened the gates of glory. May we who share Christ's body live his risen life. We who drink his cup bring life to others. We whom the Spirit lights give light to the world. Keep us firm in the hope you have set before us, so we and all your children shall be free, and the whole earth live to praise your name, through Christ our Lord. Amen. And so for our notices, next Tuesday, Tuesday the 22nd, we're going to be having our community carol sing. That'll be at 4.30pm. There will be mulled wine for the adults and chocolates for the children so do please come along on christmas eve we have our 4 p.m online family crib service and at 11 15 p.m it will be our service of midnight mass with carols now on christmas morning at 10 o'clock uh, we will be here in church uh, everybody is very welcome we would just like to get some ideas of numbers, so if you wouldn't mind registering on Eventbrite and you'll find the link in the notices which Caroline has sent to you. If you're not able to be here in person, then at 11am there will be an online festive family service and that will be with carols again. Uh, next Sunday, the 27th of December, uh, we will have a 10 a.m. said service, said Eucharist, in church. Thank you very much.
also for the blessing. Christ, the Son of Righteousness, shine upon you, scatter the darkness from before your path, and make you ready to meet him when he comes in glory. And the blessing of God Almighty, the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit be with you and all those that you love this Advent and always. Amen. Amen. And so let's go in peace to love and to serve the Lord. In the, In the name, name of Christ. Christ. Amen. Amen. Yeah. Mm -hmm.